Now, I don't know about you, but I think that some of the best game pickups and game hunting experiences happen when you don't quite know what to expect when you're checking out a place for the very first time, because maybe the prices are so sky high, you look at that and you think to yourself, thanks, but no thanks. And maybe, hypothetically, the prices are really good. You're excited. You ask to check out the condition of some Blu-ray discs or older uh, disc-based games, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, these people clearly do not care about quality control. So, hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back. This is gonna be a good video. This is gonna be a positive one. Previously, I've talked about some not so great experiences with uh, maybe some scratched up games arriving on eBay, but this, this is by far the most normal pickup experience I've had for over two years because it's so hard to go into a place now because game collecting is a thing, right? So to go into a place and to actually be surprised at the uh, quality of the games, at the fact that the prices are pretty low, I was blown away. I got a little bit emotional and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that's gone through something recently. So if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe, give me that thumbs up. And when you go down to the comment section, share some of your favorite pickups in a 2021 so far. So I got about four different pockets. Each one is a, a little bit different. This first one is going to be the most random one because I've been to my fair share of uh, pawn shops. I actually talked about the fact that I've gotten a game as low as one dollar or 99 cents to be specific more often than not you kind of don't have anything there but then i went to another pawn shop and i told my wife you know just wait in the car i don't expect to see anything i go in and i didn't take too many pictures because they didn't seem to be like the the kind of place that would allow you to take pictures but i looked at that and i said Okay, unless my wife gets out of the car, I think she's going to be there a while because they had Super Nintendo games, they had DS, a Wii, PS2, PS3, 360, my goodness people, I was so overwhelmed. And then here's a little bit of a strategy. When you go to a pawn shop, don't act like you know what you're looking for because if you're so specific about a console, then maybe those prices that they offer, because a lot of these games are not labeled, they're going to scale them up. So. I just asked the uh, clerk, okay, how much for those uh, old games over there? I just said old games or Juego Viejos. They said, well, it's about uh, 3 to $5 a piece or you can bundle them up. So after breathing heavily, I got a couple of different things and I got all of this people for 22 bucks, okay? $22, by far the best uh, gaming pickup session that I've had in over a year because look at everything that I got. First up, I had talked about the fact that I wanted to own a complete inbox copy of this game but they just threw this in because you can check out the condition of the sleeve this is split second for the xbox 360. in my previous pickups i showcased a blur which is a freaking awesome racing game if you haven't checked that video out make sure to do so at the end of this one and this one goes for over 15 dollars or about 15. i got this for free because when i picked all of this up which you'll see in just a second I asked, hey, so how much if I add this? And it's gonna be the same price because they just saw that. And I'm like, the game itself is like $8. And I got all of this for 20. So I cannot wait to play it. I still wanna get a complete inbox version of this, but I can at least play it now. And I do believe it's actually backwards compatible on the Xbox One. So I am very, very happy at that. Now, this is a very much not traditional pickup because I tend to focus on PS2, PS3, Xbox 360, but just once again, as I'm about to pay, I look over in a corner and I see this. It is a complete, I think it's complete, it's got three discs. My computer, which you can see the edge here, doesn't even have uh, a, disc, uh, a disc tray anymore, but this was $2 and it's one of those things that you're thinking to yourself, how often well, I go to a pawn shop and find uh, this jewel case of Diablo because I actually have uh, the the uh, like the one that came with like a bunch of discs from Diablo 2 for the PC, but it did not look as cool of, as uh, as cool as this. So I'm very much looking forward to putting this over in our game room. And by the way, I will briefly talk about this because yeah, that's a little bit different than what you've been seeing recently. And just to recap, here are. The first two discs, they are brand new people. They do not have a single scratch. So this is the cinematic disc, the play disc, and then when you go over here, the install disc. 
I don't know if something was supposed to go here. Honestly, at $2, people, I'm not exactly in a position to be complaining about that. Now, these are the, the things that I love because it's not a game. And the guy just looked at it, and this is when he just bundled everything up. That's another strategy. Once you have everything in a pawn shop, just ask them, how much for all of this? Do not dare, people, ask for individual prices. Once you got everything lumped up, just ask for that. Check this out. This retails for only about like $5 on eBay, whether it be new or used, $5, $10. But still, it's a welcome to PlayStation 3 PlayStation Network disc, not for resale. I don't know if this was bundled up with some uh, consoles, but at least in my case, I got the uh, 60 gigabyte PS3 and I did not get this with that. So I'm very much looking forward to maybe doing a, a watch along or something on my secondary channel, uh, Player Juan Plays, because it's a more f informal type of video. So make sure to subscribe over there if you haven't, but you can see it is uh, the uh, disc, and right there it says online gaming, online multiplayer at no additional charge. It talks about the PlayStation Eye, and it does have a uh, picture of the PlayStation Store. And from what I can see here, this is not the launch PlayStation Store. This is like the, the one that they made after. It's not the one that we have now, UI-wise, which is why I am very excited to check out this uh, Blu-ray disc just to see what's inside and if there's any game trailers that we look at and we go like, oh, that's a little bit different than the final product that we got. Obviously, I'm looking to beef up my PS3 collection and these are three games I legit wanted to buy. So it wasn't just that, eh, I'm gonna get a pile of PS3 games because they did have a ton of sports games, right? That's usually a thing, not really interested. But I got Remember Me. I don't know if you remember playing this game. Okay, you, you can leave now. Uh, I got that. I got Enslaved Odyssey to the West. This is a game that many of you have actually suggested that I play. And I had these two as part of PlayStation Plus, but now I own the physical copy, people. I mean, you got to go physicals all the way, right? And I also got the club. So the club is the one that I know the least of, but I believe this is a, a third person action game. It does have online from Sega. Enslaved Odyssey to the West is uh, an action adventure type of game. And I haven't really seen too much of it because I really do just want to experience it blindly. So you're seeing more footage here from the trailer than I've actually seen. And then remember me, I think it's one of those games that was mediocre in, in terms of its reception. But a lot of people, including my wife, uh, Dark One, I think, a couple of people have told me, hey, this is like a sleeper hit. So if you played any of these games, let me know which one you're excited to uh watch me check out, which by the way, one of my upcoming reviews is actually going to be about Grand Theft Auto Vice City. At the end of this video, I will link to my original GTA 3 review. It's a little cringy sometimes, okay? I was not nearly as comfortable on camera as I am now. I'm looking forward to talking about Vice City, so if you're excited for that, let me know in the comments. So once again, all of that for 22 bucks. So that happened on a Saturday, but on a Friday, on a Friday, people, I finished giving a training but I was done working. I almost just went home, but I went on my GPS and I wrote video game store. And I saw that five minutes away from where I was, there was a store. And I thought to myself, hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's gonna be a, a mediocre store. Real talk, that was a pretty badass strip because I also got some corn and coquito ice cream. There's a picture of that beautiful thing right there. I mean, just look at that, people. That's King's ice cream. If you're in Puerto Rico, you got to go check that out. That, that was a good day, people. That was a good day because I got all the games I'm about to show and I got that too. And I got that after the game. So it was like a celebratory uh, type of thing. And people, when I went into the store, my mind was freaking blown. I was upset because I kept asking myself, like, how come I never heard about this place? So it's called La Zona Gamer. I believe that's the full name in Caguas, Puerto Rico. And these are the games that I got. So first up, these three for 10 bucks total, people. Not bad at all. They had this a pile of a buy three for 10. And that is a rare thing. That doesn't really happen now. The game collecting is a thing. I'm looking to beef up PS2 and uh, Wii games. So first up, I got Dark Summit. I believe this is a launch title for PS2 or very close to it. As you can see, based on the cover, 
it's like an action type of ski game. I remember I always looked at the cover and thought to myself, like Dark Summit is like the weirdest name for this type of thing. Cause I always just kept thinking it was like a dark version of uh, SSX or something. And maybe it is, but I'd actually wanted to play this before. On the back it says, Jib and grind everything on the mountain. Experience the first action adventure on the slope. So is it actually gonna be a, a really decent action adventure thing? I mean, they do say no snowboarding in the back there. So they are definitely breaking the law. So we're gonna break the law here eventually and maybe give like a brief impressions. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be a full review. I'm not gonna Vice City this game, okay? It's not that I have low expectations, but yeah, that's a, that's actually exactly it. I have low expectations. Now, <laughs> I, I get talk about a lot of things. There are some games that you buy knowing they're gonna be crap. Worth noting, I have not checked out any gameplay except whatever you're watching now. I don't even know if a trailer exists, but whatever you're watching, me editing this video is my first impressions of this game. But I saw the cover and I'm like, man, three for 10. I got to get myself a copy of Rock and Roll Adventures. It does say in the back, it's time to rock and roll. Join Elvis's with a Z. Elvis's swinging party as he cleanses the world of offbeat tunes, adding the nightmare sounds. Wait, is it adding or they, did they make to, did they mean to say and the nightmare sounds? I don't know. Bash and trash, crazy instruments with Elvis's legendary guitar or strum those strings. If it's a, like a basic bat platformer for a couple bucks, I'm not gonna complain. And this one I'm curious about, I actually didn't know that this existed because I was a huge fan of uh, Sega bass fishing or Sega, bass fishing man i always get this confused between bass and bass and slap into bass and all that stuff but i i freaking love the game on sega dreamcast i actually have a copy alongside crazy taxi and all that other stuff but then friends we interrupt this previously scheduled pickups video because when i saw the trailer for the wii version of this game i said okay i gotta pause whatever the hell i'm saying in the video and play this so enjoy <laughs> people i spent a good chunk of time playing this game back in the day so man these three for ten even if i get a couple of hours worth of entertainment that's pretty much worth it right next up we have naughty bear i do know there's another version of this game that's supposedly complete but check this out just 10 bucks online it's going for around 15 to 20 and you know those ps3 prices are going up and when I saw this, I thought to myself, look, this is going to be a blind buy because one of the things that I really do miss from just like a regular gaming pickup session, you know, that's why I love uh, some retro channels that they just go into a place with not much to expect. Like M MGR Metal Jesus recently made that video about traveling to Arizona and not really sure about what to get. That's the type of video that I love because you have no idea. It can be a crappy experience. You pick nothing up or then you find a golden nugget or a hidden gem somewhere. And that's what I live for. So this one does seem like the reviews are fairly mixed, but I'm looking forward to playing it. Maybe sharing a first impression. But now this one, I am so freaking happy because I had mentioned this, I believe on my previous video, and some of you were calling me out saying, yeah, you gotta pick that up before the price goes up. This game is averaging 30 to $40. 13 people, I got wet for 13. Okay, I gotta rephrase this. I got the, the video game wet for the PlayStation 3 for $13. It's genuinely one of like the, the uh, definitive games that I wanted to pick up for either PS3 or Xbox 360. And uh, even though I could get it for 360, I really do want to continue beefing up the PS3 collection. So I do have a gameplay session of uh, the demo of this game at Player One Place. And this is probably going to be a full review or I'm going to lump this up with like some uh, must play action games on the PS3 because I really did enjoy the demo. A lot of you have said, hey, this is an excellent underrated game for the PS3 or 360, so I cannot wait 
to uh, showcase all of that. So let me know out of all of those uh, pickups, which are the ones that you uh, most enjoyed or are really excited to see me uh, talk about. Now, before I get to some other non-traditional stuff on the channel, let me quickly, okay, hey, you're making me look bad. There we go, there we go. As you can see, I decided to change my background a little bit without spending a single dollar because all that I did is that in my living room, we had that right there. And I do live in Puerto Rico. There's a whole lot of humidity and I was afraid that some of my disc-based games would eventually stop working because of the balance between, you know, cold and hot weather. And here I have a dehumidifier, air purifier. I have my air conditioning unit, which is pretty much always on for work purposes. So I thought this would be the best environment. And the funny thing is that I have almost our entire video game collection here, uh, sans GameCube and a lot of PS4 stuff. As you can see, PS4 is struggling there at the bottom, and that's not even half of our PS4 games, but we got the majority. Uh, Switch is right up there, but as you can see, we got Wii U, we got Waluigi chilling all the way back there. We have the uh, majority of our uh, Wii games, we got PS2, got PS3, wanted to make sure that was right there front and center, and Xbox 360 with a uh, OG Xbox and Xbox One right over there. And those are the games that I talked about in the previous video. So as you can see though, I cannot fit, like I literally cannot fit these other games. So I don't wanna have just a full background of video games. So I'm not too sure about uh, what I'm gonna do, but for the time being, I'm just gonna have this shelf over here. And then in our gaming lounge area, I'm still just gonna have the rest alongside our uh, one-up arcade, but that was pretty much it. Now, I'm not even talking about Logan Paul. I mean, I, I, I literally, I never thought in my life I would say the name Logan Paul in one of my videos, but here I am now. And uh, he had that Charizard card valued at like a million or whatever now. And I do have some, some friends that, are a little bit hooked on this whole Pokemon card collecting thing. So whenever I go to a Walgreens or something, I see if there's there, if, if there's anything there. And supposedly these are worth buying. These are worth a pretty penny. So I got Roaring Skies, Evolution, whatever that is. There's like Xerneas. I guess that's a current Pokemon. Man, I, I, look, I'm, I'm like a gold and silver type of Pokemon player, right? And I mean, I played uh, Alpha and Sapphire, all that stuff, but check these out. I'm gonna ship these out to a friend, so these are not even mine, but I did wanna let you know that apparently you can still find some Pokemon stuff if you go out there. And now, I do love the sharp contrast of, hey, I'm picking up older games at a good price. Costco is the worst place. And Costco is also the best place because you wanna go get a, a $5 chicken and then you get this people so i th i think the microphone's here yeah there we go so i got myself the oculus uh, quest 2 people and uh, the reason that i got this is because i am huge into music rhythm games and uh, my wife and i had wanted to play beat saber for a very long time and we just wanted to get into like a new hobby together because we're both gamers i've talked about that before and we had always looked at VR as this neat, cute little thing here, and we just wanted to give it a shot. You know, the good thing about both of us being gamers is that whatever we get, we split in half, and it benefits, and you know, with the things uh, falling into a more normal place, we can soon have friends and visitors come over, and we love to entertain guests in our home, so that's where we got that. This is the uh, 264 gigabyte model. Also, as you can see, wow, okay, that was quick. I had to reach out to Oculus because you actually see here, I got a bit of an allergic reaction and uh, supposedly they can send out a replacement. So, hey, uh, Oculus, whatever the name of the actual company is, look, look, you want a proof? I already got this rash over here. And it's because apparently this material uh, is allergic to 0.01% of the people that use the headset. And of course, I got a freaking fall under that percentage. So as of this recording, I played Dance Central. No, there's no gameplay footage of that. I played Beat Saber and I played the demo to uh, Creed. And that was a sight to behold, like having a, a dude just show up right there and you're looking up, you gotta, you gotta uh, bump fists and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, the, the scale 
of VR is simply something else. I really do enjoy doing all that. And as somebody that loved to play uh, DDR and all that stuff, this is like an evolution of that. So I'm very much looking forward to doing some VR stuff. Not sure if I'm going to do coverage on this channel. Honestly, I think that uh, VR is going to be more for me. If you are interested, though, uh, definitely let me know. One of the benefits of Quest 2, for those who don't know, is that this one, you don't need any wires. It comes with this and the controllers. You can charge this. Uh, it lasts for about two and a half hours. But if you really want to take this to the next level, you can get a cable which plugs into your computer and you can use it as a more traditional VR headset. So that way you really get the full power of your computer if you want to play beefier games and stuff like that. I haven't done that yet because I'm just getting the ball rolling and because of the allergies, I'm kind of struggling to uh, play this. And I'm almost just getting ready to head over to Amazon and just buy like a $10, uh, it's like a silicone type of replacement. But hey, Oculus, I mean, they're willing to send one for free as long as I can provide proof. So once again, I mean, the proof is right there. Make sure we see if we, uh, let's see if we can get a rash, people. Okay, that, that sounded wrong. But uh, please uh, don't feel shy about recommending other VR games that I should check out. I really want to get into like the light gun type of stuff, right? I love going to the arcade back in the day, playing games like uh, Time Crisis, Crisis Zone, House of the Dead. I know there's a zombie type game. One game that I'm really looking forward to playing and I think I can play with this headset is uh, Resident Evil 4, Half-Life Alex. You know, I recently talked about Half-Life 2 on this channel here, so I, I forget where that story takes place, so I don't know if I should finish all the Half-Life 2 episodes before I play that, but please let me know, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, pickups video. You know, um, my life is going through a lot of changes, and I have mentioned that before, so I don't put out videos in the frequency that I really would like, and that's sometimes fr frustrating, but life is here, and as a friend, you know, as an online friend here, uh, let's see here. Okay, first of all, I gotta fix the hair. Okay, check this out, see? Check this out, I'm not making stuff up, people. Look at that, look at that right there. See, see, Oculus, give me the damn free thing. Oh my goodness, yeah. Okay, there, that's definitely there, but I just enjoy chatting up with everybody. One of my uh, next reviews, as I mentioned, is gonna be Vice City. I recently completed that game and I freaking love my time to the point that I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch out the more traditional uh, Vita reviews for the channel. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give me that thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, up until next time, thank you for watching, supporting, and take care, everybody. Also, I forgot to mention, I went to a Chinese buffet uh, just before I picked these up. What's your thoughts about a Chinese buffet? There are sometimes the best decisions, and the worst decisions.